Okay, so we're going to solve this problem and we need to find the product of all of the factors of this number, 27,720. And there's actually a really nice argument which we can generalise so we'll be able to find the product of all of the factors of any integer. So the most obvious way of doing this, which might be a bit long, it would just be to list all of the factors of this number and multiply them together. But you can see with a large number it's going to have a lot of factors. But we could at least list them in factor pairs. So for example, we have of course 1 is going to go into our original number. We can see that it's even, so we could write it as 2 times 13,860. And we could keep going like this, listing them in factor pairs. So 3 times 9240, and we'd have 4 times 6930. But even this is quite long, so we'd have to go all the way down to 165 times 180 and then the next factor the next number which goes into this after 165 would actually be 180 at which point we start to repeat ourselves so if we found a nice way of multiplying all of these together this will be really helpful towards solving our problem and you might spot because we've written them in factor pairs like this each of these pairs multiply together to give our original number so we get the same answer for each of these products just by design because they're all just going to be our original number, so you get the same sort of structure all the way through. So our answer to this problem then would be the product of all of these factors would be 27,720 raised to a certain power. So we could write our answer then as 27,720 raised to the power of, let's call this d divided by 2, where d is going to be the total number of factors or the total number of divisors. So d is the number of factors of our original number. So if we can find a nice way of finding the total number of factors of our original number then we're able to solve our problem in quite a neat way. And to do this let's have a look at the prime factorization of our number. So we could start with, for example, we know that it's 4 times this number so we could write it as 2 squared times 6, 9, 3, 0 and you can see this is a multiple of 10 so we could take out another factor of 2 and another 5 to write this as 2 cubed times 5 times 693. Now you can see this is divisible by 3, so we've got 2 cubed times 3 times 5 times 231. And then 231 is also divisible by 3, so we get 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 times 77. Now we can see the 77 breaks up into 7 times 11. So now that we've got the prime factorization of our original number, we'll be able to use this prime factorization to find quite a neat way of calculating what is this number of the factors of our original number. If we think about all the factors of 27,720, they all have to be made up of its prime factors. So this leads us to there's quite a neat combinatorial argument we can use to calculate exactly how many factors it has. So we could think about this as let's construct one of its factors by using all of the prime factors. So first of all, we've got the choice of how many 2's go into this number. So we could have 0 2's go into it, or we could have 1 2, 2 2's, or we could have 3 2's if it's going to be a multiple of 8. So this gives us a total of 4 options so far. Then for each of these we've got the choice of do we include a 3, do we include 2 3's, or do we not include any 3's. So we've got another 3 options for each of these. And then when we get onto 5 we've just got the option of including a 5, or not including our 5 for our factor. So we multiply by 2 and then similarly for 7 and for 11. And you might see if we add in powers of 1 here, the structure here is we're essentially just taking 1 plus the power here and multiplying them all together. So this is giving us quite a nice way, and we'll see how this will generalise in a moment. There's quite a neat formula for this. So when we multiply together all of these options, 4 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2, we get 96. So our answer isn't 27,720 to the power of 96, because remember this is the number of factors, but we need to divide this by 2, because we're counting all the factor pairs from earlier. So our final answer would be 27,720 raised to the power of 48. So we won't actually calculate this. This is quite a ridiculous number. It's got 214 digits in base 10, but it's quite neat how we can get a simple expression for this, for what seems like a really complicated problem. And then just to see how we generalise this then, let's imagine we've got another integer n, and if we write it in a general form as its product of prime factors, so its first prime factor, let's say this is raised to a power of k1, and then we've got p2 raised to a power of k2, and so on up to, let's say, pr 
raised to the power of kr. So now our answer here is going to be n raised to the power of the number of factors divided by 2. And just like we've seen here, we essentially just need to multiply together all of the powers plus 1. So then we're going to have n raised to the power of, we've got a half times, it'll be k1 plus 1 times k2 plus 1 and so on, all the way up to kr plus 1. And then we could even write this using a pi notation for the product to give a quite neat formula. So we get n to the power of a half times the product, let's say from i equals 1 up to r of ki plus 1. So we get quite a neat looking formula then for the product of all of the factors of this integer n if we know what its prime factorization is. And if we look at this formula, I think this looks a little bit weird that we have this factor of a half because it is possible for our number of factors of a number to actually be an odd number. So in this case, if we have an odd number of factors, it turns out this actually corresponds to the case exactly where we have a square number. So just to illustrate this with an example, let's look at 36. So we can write this as 1 times 36, 2 times 18. So all of the factor pairs come in twos, but the only exception is when you have a square number. So here where we've got the 6 times 6, we don't need to include this 6 towards our count. So our answer here, the product of all of the factors of 36, would be 36 raised to the power of 9 over 2. And this feels a bit weird, having our answer, which we know is going to be an integer, with a non-integer power. But I like this, how it's really neat that we have the non-integer power, where it's to the power of a half. So we can think of this as being the square root of 36 raised to the power of 9, effectively. But I think it's really neat that we get this non-integer power exactly in the case where we have a square number. So we get an odd number of factors exactly when we have a square number, and this leads us to the non-integer power. But of course we can take the power of a half exactly when we have a square number. So I think that's quite nice how this structure kind of cancels out there, and the formula of course still works even when we have an odd number of factors.